Trial by jury is not a reliable system. I've said it before and I've said it again. Unfortunately, I don't have the solution. I just have the opinion. I also have quite a strong opinion about the Channel 5 documentary Murder in a Small Town, which has just aired. It's a two-part series and... Actually, there was quite some controversy about the second episode. Apparently, it revealed the name um, or the identity of a potential other suspect, but that wasn't meant to be featured. So they had to pull it from the website, edit it, and it is back up. I did see the edited version. But if you do know any more about that, do let me know. And this is a really interesting documentary about a case that I hadn't heard of. It's about a girl who, Georgia Jones, um, she was murdered. She's from a small village in Scotland. Me being Scottish, that just was something I kind of liked because it's rare that there'll be a true crime series about something that happens in Scotland. It just doesn't seem to happen that often. But it looks at whether or not the p- person convicted of Jodie Jones's murder was the real person. And let's be honest, no, it wasn't. I haven't seen... I, I watched this and then I went onto Twitter and I had a look at other people's thoughts and... Not one single person that I've seen has said that Luke Mitchell was the killer. Not only was it possible that there could be somebody else, there is literally nothing linking Luke to this. So I'll talk about the documentary itself without giving any spoilers, but towards the end of this I will give some details as to why I think why I think basically everybody in the world except that jury thinks that he is either innocent or at least not able to be convicted, although he was been, he was been, he has been, or he was. The documentary I like for several reasons. I like the fact they didn't milk it. It's two episodes, each one about an hour in length, and that's the perfect length. A lot of doc- documentaries will do a five, six parter because that's the trend now, and it drags. But this one was engaging. It was fresh. It didn't really repeat too much. Only enough to recap. The editing was very good. We had a lot of um, thoughts shared by professionals, um, you know, forensics, detectives, some who were involved at the time, some who weren't, who are looking at this with a fresh perspective. And in this documentary, they are basically revisiting this case. So they're trying to solve it, but they're trying to solve it backwards. And it's not that they're trying to disprove Luke Mitchell, they're just trying to look at it as if they didn't have any suspects and they were trying to work out who who did it. I will say the documentary for me didn't focus enough on who Jodie Jones was or why she could have been murdered. Um, obviously, I looked into this a little bit, but I like the fact that it's focused on Luke Mitchell and how it's affected his family and his mother in particular, which is so heartbreaking. But I think we needed just a little bit more of Jodie Jones's background, but it wasn't void of anything. Maybe there could have been a third episode, but it's not the biggest issue. Yes, Luke Mitchell's mother, I I won't spoil it too much by um, kind of going into any detail about her current living conditions. But out of everybody, apart from obviously Jodie Jones's family, she has suffered severely. And she's so, you know, she's so articulate. She's so you know passionate about her son and determined to get this sorted. And... Usually you'll hear from the parents of the victim and maybe you'll have a couple of words from the suspect's parents um, or the convicted's parents. But this is basically almost her telling this story. I'd say she's 50% in charge of this narrative and she's so easy to like and you can tell that she obviously feels remorseful for what's happened were her son actually guilty but she doesn't believe he is, and not one single person who I've seen writing about this believes he is. So the documentary itself, if you're interested in watching it, definitely give it a go. It tells the story very well. I felt like I really understood what had happened or, you know, what the information that is available um, is presented very well. Obviously, nobody knows what actually happened, which is the whole point of the documentary. The only thing about it is that it is so frustrating because it's so blatantly obvious that regardless of whether or not Luke Mitchell did this, and I don't think he did, there is no evidence. And I will talk now a little bit about that, so if you don't want to know anything about that, um, maybe go and watch the documentary first and then come back. I'll talk a little bit about the case in more detail. But just to sum up, the documentary is great. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it hit the nail on the head in every count. 
also credit to them for very quickly taking it offline, editing it and putting it back online so I could watch it. So the case. There is no forensic evidence to link Luke. There is no DNA. And if somebody's being brutally murdered, she was, I believe it said she was stabbed in the throat 12 to 20 times. She was pretty much decapitated. There is no graphics in this, by the way. There's nothing gory. Um, it's done very respectfully. You'd think if you were going to stab somebody even once, there'd be trace evidence of some kind. That was never the case. Not only did they not find Luke's DNA, they did find the DNA of several other people. Um, several other men as well. People um, whom they could identify. One I think they could identify at the time. Another one they identified a bit later. And why didn't they follow those up? There were excuses as to why at least one of those, one of that DNA was there. The one on the t-shirt. Which yes, I understand why they could have done that. But if you have DNA suggesting that. And you have zero DNA for Luke Mitchell. Why on earth? Would you do that? Literally, the only reason Luke Mitchell was convicted is because he was kind of the one who found the body. Like, that's absolutely ludicrous. And this is why trial by jury is inadequate. Because just because they're 12 independent people, it doesn't mean they have any level of intelligence or common sense. And clearly, they had a very bad batch of people that day. I think if you've got no knowledge of these things, then why should you judge I just think when it's a murder case, I think having a jury trial is just not adequate enough. You need people who actually understand forensics and know what's going on and know the difference between circumstantial evidence and actual evidence. I got very annoyed by this. Would I have liked to have heard more from Jodie Jones's family and friends? Um, yes and no. I think it worked well the way it was done, but it would have been interesting. Ultimately, and I said this was a spoiler, um... The way it concludes is disappointing, not because of the documentary itself, but because of just the way the case has gone. And if nothing else, I pray that this gets a retrial, that Luke Mitchell gets a retrial from this and he will be like, he will be a free man. He has to be because what evidence is there? There is literally no evidence. How can a jury convict somebody beyond reasonable doubt when there is no evidence. Absolutely none. I don't understand it. And this is why, as much as I'd love to be on a jury, trial by jury just doesn't work. And somebody has lost many years of their life because of that. If, at the end of the day, it turns out that Luke Mitchell did it, fine. But he still shouldn't have been convicted because there's no evidence. So it's an exceptionally infuriating documentary, but at the same time, it's engaging, enjoyable, a pleasure to watch for all of the right reasons, but hard to watch, but I guess for all of the right reasons again. Murder in a Small Town, I thought would be an emotional watch about the murder of a teenage girl, but actually it's a frustrating watch about a young boy, now a man, who has been convicted for something he may not have done. I am confident beyond reasonable doubt that there is no evidence to link him to the murder of Jodie Jones.